Okay, everybody, let's start. Uh, wait a minute. Somebody sent me a message as soon as I started the video. Uh, Rabia, I'll look into it. Okay? I'll look into it. Achha. Okay. So, drugs that lower plasma lipid level and today is the uh, second part. Remember, in the last class, I told you all that uh, we need one more class to discuss three more uh, parts of the drug. So, this is it. All right. So, in order to treat uh, hypolipo hyperlipoproteinemias, okay, we are going to uh, take the vitamin, okay, which is uh, nicotinic acid, niacin. So its mechanism of action is nicotinic acid can exert cholesterol and triglyceride lowering effects at high concentration. Okay. This is distinct from the role of this molecule as a vitamin in which nicotinic acid is converted to nicotinamide and is used for biosynthesis of cofactors. Okay. So here they are telling that apart from this function, uh, nicotinic acid also has this function of lowering down the uh, cholesterol and triglyceride. Okay. So, nicotinic acid reduces the LDL by inhibiting the synthesis and esterification of fatty acids in the liver. Okay. And reducing lipolysis in adipose tissue. It, remark it markedly decreases plasma triglyceride levels. As the substrate, LDL concentration is reduced. The concentration of IDL and LDL also decrease, thereby reducing plasma cholesterol levels. HDL levels increase significantly because of reduced catabolism. So, you see guys, basically if I crack it up into simple words, okay. So, simple is that nicotinic acid is actually the one which is reducing LDL, triglyceride, and it is increasing the HDL, the fats that we need, okay? So, in much smaller doses, nicotinic acid can be used as a vitamin supplement in the treatment of plegra. So, what is plegra? Plegra is this condition in which uh, there is an inability to absorb the vitamin B3, which is the acid, or the amino acid trypto uh, fat. So this causes plagra, a disease characterized by scaly sores, mucosal changes, and mental symptoms as well. Okay. So adverse effect is this, that it produces flushing and itching or burning feeling in the skin, which may reduce compliance. This is mediated by prostaglandins and histamine release and can be diminished by taking aspirin 30 minutes before taking nicotinic acid. It means that if you're going to take nicotinic acid, since you know already that inflammation will happen uh, and because of that, flushing and itching will be there. So in order to reduce it, a person should take aspirin after 30 minutes of taking the nicotinic acid. Okay, so nicotinic acid produces hepatic effects including increased transaminase activities, hyperglycemia, GI disturbances, and peptic ulcer, renal effects that include elevated plasma uric acid and macular edema. What is macular edema? It's within the eye, okay. Uh, the, the, the fluid increases, okay. All right. Then we have another class, which is fibric acid analogs. And the first drug which we are doing in this class is phenofibrate. So mechanism of action is this. First of all, I'll tell you in very simpler words. Okay. And then we'll start reading it. In very simpler words, when we take this medicine, okay, it goes to the nucleus, okay, and stop the genes which are responsible for the effects, okay? 
All right, so let's read it. Fibrates stimulate the activity of peroxis, uh, peroxisome proliferating activating receptor alpha, which is also called PPAR alpha. And in some books, it is also written PPARA, okay? A class of nuclear receptors, okay? So activation of these receptors alter the transcription of a number of genes involved in triglyceride metabolism, including lipoprotein lipase and apolipoprotein C3. This increases the peripheral catabolism of LDL and chylomicrons. Okay. So again, here we are decreasing the triglyceride content and LDL content. But majorly, if we talk about phenofibrate, so its major effect is on decreasing the number of triglyceride. Okay. All right. Uh, then we have, it reduces hepatic synthesis of cholesterol that reduces plasma triglyceride. Like I said, the major effect is triglyceride reduction. Okay. So therapeutic uses. Phenofibrate can be used to treat hyperlipidemia of several etiologies, especially hypertriglyceridemia uh, due to this beta lipoproteinemia. Uh, it's again a condition in which the lipoprotein is being increased in the blood. Okay, a defect in apolipoprotein E that impairs clearance of uh, chylomicron remnants and LDL. Okay, so basically in this defect, uh, this uh, there is a defect in the apolipoprotein E which reduces the el elimination of uh, these two and because of which it happens so uh, uh, phenofibrate can be used to treat this. Alright. Then we have phenofibrate is ineffective in primary uh, chylomicronemia caused by a deficiency of lipoprotein lipase and has little effect on reducing plasma cholesterol levels. Phenofibrate has antidiuretic action in individuals with mild or moderate diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus is actually a condition in which um, a person has extreme amount of th uh, thirst, okay, and the person urinates a lot, okay. So, the person gets, uh, I repeat, diabetes, do not confuse diabetes inhibitus, insipidus with diabetes mellitus. Okay, these are two different conditions. In diabetes insipidus, you, you have intense thirst and uh, you urinate a lot. Okay, so phenofibrate has antidiuretic effects as well. Okay, with mild or moderate diabetes insipidus. Okay, so adverse effects, like I already said in one of the classes, that, you know, whatever you feel uh, are the actions, okay, think about it, what can be the adverse effects, and literally you can go to it. So, phenofibrates produce, in simple words, gallstones, okay? This terminology refers to gallstones, cholecystasis, and uh, cholelithasis. Okay, then, then we have GI intolerance, nausea, mild diarrhea, and myalgilia. This drug frequently causes dermatology, uh, dermato uh, wait a minute, dermatological reaction and rosiness as well as decreased libido in a small percentage for men. Wait a minute. Okay. Then we have phenofibrate can displace other albumin bound drugs, most notably the sulfonyl ureas and warfarin. So it must be used consciously in individuals with impaired renal or hepatic functions. Then we in the in the class of fibric analogs, we have another drug by the name of Gem fibro fibrozil. So, gem fibrozil is a fibrate 
that is more effective than phenofibrate in more some, some, some circumstances and has some unique biological activities. So therapeutic uses are identical to those of phenofibrate. It may be more active in reducing triglyceride than phenofibrate. Then we have azitimib. So it acts within the intestine to reduce cholesterol absorption. Now just imagine when cholesterol will not be absorbed automatically, the condition will be tackled, right? So cholesterol is absorbed from the small intestine by a process that include a specific transporter. And one of the transporters name is Nemen pick C1 like one. Its short form is NPC1L1 protein. Okay, it's a transporter. So what happens is, uh, which is important for the sterol absorption in the gut. So basically this medicine, okay, it binds to this transporter, okay, and inhibits the function of the transporter, thereby reducing cholesterol absorption. It is used alone, uh, wait a minute, used alone produces a reduction in plasma cholesterol of about 18% and about 10% decline in uh, triglyceride level when combined with the statin. Reduction in plasma cholesterol is as high as 72%. Then it appears to be well tolerated with the most common adverse effect being fatigue, abdominal pain and diarrhea. Then the last class is bile acid sequitrins. Sequestrants. Okay. It includes three drugs. We have Colstyrene, colstyrenamide. Then we have colstipol, and then we have colstibulin. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about its action. Okay. What does bile acid do in actual? Okay. Bile acid, bile is actually produced by liver. Bile is then stored in the gallbladder and then it is later on released in the duodenum. Okay. Now what exactly bile contains is, bile contains two things. Bile contains bile salts and bile acid. Okay. Now the function of this bile acid is actually that it would bind with the cholesterol. Okay. And then it will help the cholesterol to get um, absorbed through the small intestine okay take it as if uh, i'm sure you all have studied um, in your junior classes that within the small intestine okay um, there the absorption is taking place of fatty acids and then uh, of amino acids and glucose okay so basically, within the small intestine, okay, the hydrophilic, okay, they are being absorbed more, okay. So what this bile acid sequitrins, they do that, is this, they actually go and attach on the bile acid and then they stop its action, okay. And later on, it is eliminated from the body. Why elimination of bile acid is actually helping it? Wait a minute. For example, let's say this is a small intestine, this is liver. Okay? Alright. So you see, what happens is through the hepatic portal vein, okay, the bile acid is usually, 95% of the bile acid is usually reuptaken, okay? And then it is reused. It is recycled. Now just imagine when bile acid, okay, it will get trapped and it will get eliminated, okay. The cholesterol will get eliminated. It will not be absorbed. So automatically this condition will be cured. Right, everybody? Now let's read about the knowledge 
that we have on this slide. So bile acid sequestrants are large copolymers of hydrocarbons that can bind biosols. Okay. So cholestamine and cholestipol exchange a chloride anion for a bile acid. These resins are hydrophilic, but they are not absorbed across the intestine. Clear? In the intestine, the resin bind bile salt and prevent enterohepatic reutilization. Enterohepatic is actually the reutilization of bile acid uh, by getting absorbed in the small intestine and going back to the liver and being reused, okay? In addition, they impair the absorption of D3 cholesterol. So therapeutic uses, these are effective in reducing plasma cholesterol, 10 to 20% in patients with some normal LDL receptors. This excludes patients who completely lack functional LDL receptors because of genetical defect. So the adverse effects being, these agents are generally quite safe, but they are not absorbed in the intestine. Bile acid sequestrants produce GI disturbance, which is constipation is like one of the major uh, adverse effect of this class of drug, okay, which may reduce compliance. Uh, then we have uh, cold sevlim has fever, GI side effects and others. So these drugs interfere with the absorption of anionic drugs such as digitalis and warfarin. Okay, everybody, that is it for today. Uh, wait.